again to my news business uh, with uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Hassan uh, Ali Mufutuha. Well, uh, a lot has been taking place, and of course, to the EPAs, uh, the African Forum that is resuming uh, its um, activities for the second day in Sharm el Sheikh. What is it uh, uh, focusing on? What's the uh, goal, actually, uh, of the, uh, uh, this forum? In fact, there are uh, many items on the agenda of the EPAs, uh, which is being held. Uh, uh, in Sharm el Sheikh, uh, um, uh, one of the major items on the agenda could, would be the uh, foreign direct investment uh, in Africa. Uh, in fact, Africa is very present very unique opportunities for uh, foreign investors yeah. for many reasons. Uh, but before I speak about the uh, incentives for or the reasons why Africa is, is a good opportunity for investors, I would like to mention that uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has left a very uh, serious impact on the FDI uh, for Egypt and for Africa as definitely, well. Even definitely. before the pandemic, the, uh, the rate of uh, FDI yeah. in Africa was declining globally and also in Africa. Uh, yet Egypt still uh, present as per the UNCTAD reports uh, on FDI uh, trends in 2020. Egypt was the, uh, on, the, uh, on the forefront of uh, destinations for foreign direct investment in Africa. Back again to the uh, incentives that uh, the African countries, the African content, yeah. continent present to foreign investors. There are many incent uh, incentives, primarily if we know that uh, Africa is a continent with uh, many treasures which is being uh, discovered, unutilized uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, of course, uh, the manpower is a major incentive for the foreign uh, direct investment in Africa, uh, particularly if we know that uh, the majority of the population, the segments of the youth in Africa is very high, and that's a very important uh, incentive for uh, foreign in investors to come to a place where they find cheap labor, they find skilled and unskilled labor uh, uh, for uh, production. Uh, also, the roads and ports in Africa are diversified, uh, yeah. which make uh, the, uh, w the world trade to and from uh, Africa uh, convenient. Uh, also, I see that uh, Africa is very rich uh, with the uh, uh, minerals and with the natural resources which are being used for production in many uh, in industries. Uh, also, uh, I think that uh, another item on the agenda was the intra-trade between the African, among the African countries, and the the way to boost the intra-trade between the countries, uh, the incentives which could be uh, presented uh, to make uh, the uh, trade easier uh, among countries. Yeah, uh, actually, like uh, um, some experts say that the future is in Africa. Uh, it's been neglected a long time, and other people are taking well countries are taking place of Egypt. When Egypt was away for 30 years, now Egypt is back again since it's in Africa, taking its role actually like uh, it was presiding the uh, um, African Union, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the EU, and of course. Of course, right now, it, we, this, with the New Republic, there is no joke. And uh, mm -hmm. there is a lot of serious work mm -hmm. uh, setting the roads and setting everything you know, to, to be able to get foreign direct investments. Mm -hmm. And of, of course, you know, like working with Africa, I think that will you know, um, be the best strength. And of course, you know, like, um, well, you know, like, uh, being with Africa, uh, uh, working with Africa, benefiting each other is uh, a great thing. Yes. And one more thing I would like to state here that uh, the, this forum was held in Sharm Sheikh yes. in Egypt, and this is a very strong and clear message that Egypt is back again. Egypt is hosting international uh, events, uh, and uh, of course, uh, this is uh, one way forward to, to resuming the industry of uh, uh, conferencing, uh, conferences and uh, Again, keep my finger crossed for tourism to come back to Sharm el-Sheikh and other destinations. Definitely. Uh, so now, you know, like we're moving, you know, like where this is a very important event. But then, you know, we do have, you know, like with the new uh, developments taking place in Egypt, the polymer uh, currency. What is uh, polymer, like the plastic banknotes? How is it going to be like? There are lots of questions, you know, taking place. Some people are not aware that this is happening, but then... Um, 
there is a lot to say about that. What's polymer banknotes or a plastic banknotes? Very simply, a polymer banknote is made of a very thin, transparent uh, uh, material, uh, material mm -hmm. transparent uh, material, and uh, the uh, printing of the design uh, is on the back and uh, and uh, front using special ink and using uh, special uh, security features. Unlike the conventional uh, or traditional banknotes, uh, uh, the bank the traditional banknotes are made of paper uh, of cotton paper, yeah. uh, which are more is uh, more frequently or vulnerable to wear and tear, yeah. where the uh, uh, polymer notes. Uh, last uh, 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 more than two and a half uh, times the lifespan of uh, the polymer is nearly two and a half times of the conventional uh, cotton paper. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, but then why did the central bank decide uh, uh, on that and uh, uh, moving to polymer uh, banknotes? In fact, uh, the central bank of Egypt decided uh, uh, maybe a couple of years ago to introduce uh, the polymer notes when the uh, printing house of the central bank located in the new capital city is ready. Uh, and uh, recently the central bank officials uh, stated that uh, the first issue of the polymer notes will be uh, in June and they will start with the 10 pound denomination. And so why Egypt started, why the central bank decided to uh, present the uh, polymer notes. There are very, uh, very uh, simple and uh, good reasons for that. First, they are the polymer notes, they stand or they, uh, uh, they are uh, more durable than the paper, uh, paper cotton uh, notes. And uh, they are more cleaner, they, are, uh, they pre present resilience to, uh, to water, to wear and tear. Uh, and uh, they present also uh, resilience to counterfeit. They cannot be easily counterfeited, mm -hmm. unlike the uh, co uh, conventional uh, cotton uh, paper, conventional notes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one of the reasons. Maybe another good reason is uh, on the longer term, uh, this would help in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the inclusion of the great economy into the formal economy because mm -hmm. the uh, like what happened in India a few years back yeah. when the Indian uh, government uh, changed several de denominations of uh, the local currency mm -hmm. and that was a way to fight uh, the uh, the illegal proceeds of crimes which are mainly in cash and forced uh, the uh, uh, the uh, criminal uh, gangs to present the money to the into the legal system and in this way it it was a very good way to fighting or combating crime so uh, in egypt uh, the matter is uh, more simpler than that uh, the, the denomination the 10 pound denominations will be uh, issued it will go alongside the conventional 10 pounds oh, okay, of the cotton so paper. It, okay, so you know, is the, it will be introduced uh, bit by bit, not you know, like changing the exactly, currency. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so it will be, uh, hopefully it will be uh, issued this month and uh, uh, subsequently it will be followed by the 20 pound denomination. Uh, just uh, this gap or between the issuing the first uh, and what, what about the one pounds you know would they stay you know the metal ones as uh, they will remain as is okay as, as at now because yeah. we don't have any so now, news yeah. about uh, issuing uh, polymer notes for uh, the denomination one pounds or the co uh, replacing the coins but then if it's known that you know like uh, uh, there will be polymer bank notes that will be taking the place of the uh, conventional ones but then you know that would give time for the, the those in the great economy or illegal uh, you know work mm -hmm. uh, that you know that they, they would be just maybe transferring the money into other currencies uh, in order to escape the uh, process uh, they ha they have their own means, but I don't think that we, they will they uh, will succeed to do that because the uh, it it will be very costly for them to exchange mm -hmm. because uh, they exchange the notes to other uh, to other uh, currencies or even other denominations. Th this will be will come under the microscope, mm -hmm. okay, under the spot of yeah. the authorities. Yeah. 
so they would eventually be caught mm -hmm. if they do if they do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we are starting to do this. What other countries are doing this? Are there any other countries that are using the polymer notes, well, instead of the conventional notes? Well, um, let me start with uh, what. Uh, who uh, is the first country which issued polymer notes? It was Australia in 1988, too long ago. And then, as at today, there are nearly 50 countries are using polymer notes, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, Great Britain, Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, New Zealand. Uh, uh, other countries in the Middle East also include Morocco, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, uh, these countries are using diff uh, polymer notes in different denominations. Mm -hmm. well, well, of course, you know, for each thing there are pros and cons. You know, what are the pros and what are the cons of using polymer notes? As you said, there are advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. On the side of advantages, let me tell you that uh, they, they are many, and in fact, the uh, outright the, uh, the, the disadvantages. The advantages include the, the polymer notes carry uh, very sophisticated security features that were not available in the, uh, uh, in, on the, uh, the conventional uh, current paper yeah. notes. Uh, they use, uh, for example, uh, transparent windows with layers of, uh, with special layers uh, uh, of uh, with special inks and special inks that cannot be easily uh, 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 faked. Mm -hmm. Also, they use holograms and other uh, hidden uh, images in, in, in the layers, and yeah. it is not cost effective at all for any uh, anyone to uh, counterfeit because of the cost of counterfeiting would be extremely high. Uh, also, the uh, the polymer notes are uh, environment friendly uh, because they uh, they don't they they, they are not easily uh, stained. Uh, they cannot uh, carry uh, the germs. They can be easily uh, cleaned if they get stained with uh, with uh, a, a tissue, a clean tissue. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, the polymer notes. Uh, 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 they are uh, uh, user friendly. They can be folded into uh, a wallet like any, like the conventional uh, mm -hmm. currency. Yeah. Uh, so these, uh, in fact, are few of the advantages of that uh, are connected with the polymer notes. Uh, on the side of uh, the disadvantages, mm -hmm. uh, polymer notes can be slippy, okay, and uh, difficult to sort. If, if they get wet, they, they are difficult to, to sort. Yeah. That is because of the humidity and uh, they stick, the, 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 the notes stick. Uh, also, uh, in, uh, in, uh, they can, uh, the, uh, the ink can fade in hot countries, in, hot, in very hot temperature, and that happened in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, maybe in year 20, uh, 2011. Uh, but I'm sure that by now, the sophistication of the industry uh, have tackled uh, this issue. Uh, the cost of adaptation to or adaptation of the sorting machine and the ATMs and any machine that is used for dispensing uh, the uh, polymer notes, this co initial cost could be very high. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the polymer note cannot be uh, folded uh, like with, you know the the, the it, old ones. Yeah. yeah, it would leave a thin a thin break in mm -hmm. in, 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 in the middle. Yeah. But I mean, these are all uh, some of the uh, disadvantages. But uh, I'm sure that the advantages uh, are greater uh, to uh, overcome the disadvantages. Definitely. But why not starting with a smaller denomination? Why did not they start with like a hundred pound note or two hundred pound note that we have? Trial. It's, it's of course there are okay. some uh, some uh, some issues with uh, with uh, deciding which currency in circulation that could be 
replaced or that could be uh, put on a trial phase. So the, the, govern, the government here, as, sorry, the central bank here, like any other uh, gov, uh, uh, monetary authority, uh, they studied the money in circulation and uh, decided which denomination should go first in a testing phase. Also, the, the, the central bank would, would expect some feedback Definitely, from, yeah. the, from the citizens about the cons and pros of uh, using the polymer notes, and this will be taken into consideration when deciding, uh, releasing or issuing a higher denomination of mm -hmm. polymer. Mm -hmm. Well, when do they intend to, uh, well, you know, like issue the, uh, the, the polymer banknotes and put it in the market? When is it decided? Uh, well, the, the, the news from the central bank, uh, uh, it, it was, it was uh, rele uh, released, uh, the news wa wa which were released last week uh, uh, indicates that uh, the central bank will issue uh, the 10 pound denomination by end of June mm -hmm. and uh, there will be a, a period of testing and receiving the feedback of the citizens before going uh, to issue the uh, 20 pounds denomination. Definitely. Well, we'll go for a short break after we should be coming back, resuming our talk. Uh, stay tuned to us, don't go away. Welcome back again to Money Means Business uh, with uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Hany Bolfutu. And uh, we are talking about the new polymer banknote uh, that is uh, going into the market uh, as a trial. Well, the, the well, we talked about the pros and cons of that. And then, um, well, you know, a question that comes to my mind. Uh, for example, if I just, you know, buy something for, let's say, two pounds and I hand the 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 seller um, note of ten pounds a polymer note uh, he's returning pounds normal pounds not polymer of course he would because <laughs> we are dealing you presented to him uh, yeah. ten, ton, uh, ten, uh, 10 pounds polymer and the exchange the small exchange would be the conventional uh, one pounds and other coins so yeah. uh, you expect that you receive your money uh, the the rest of the money in the so I wouldn't get account. them chewing gums, you know, or anything. <laughs> oh, well, uh, it depends where you shop. Oh, yeah. Because some people do that, you know, it's uh, like, uh, you know, they do have, but they don't want to give you the pounds. So I yeah, said, you know, that's like, cross selling. I, exactly. Yeah. yeah I, I will sell you. I will just buy with the chewing gum. And then, you know, well, you don't give me the money. It's a new coin. Could be. New currency. <laughs> new currency, you know, with some new people. New currency, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also that, you know, like when you, you withdraw money, you know, you want, uh, you know, sometimes I withdraw, I say I want a 10 pound note, you know, from the machine. How do we do that, you know, with the 10, well, the 10 pound notes that is polymer? Does it work with, uh, you know, the cash machines? Well, that, that's one of the major issues that, uh, for the central bank mm -hmm. uh, and the financial institutions to handle before the release of the 10 pound or the new, any new uh, polymer uh, denomination. The ATMs, the counting machines, the sorting machines, the, vend, uh, the, vend, uh, the vending machines, all these old machines that accept or dispense uh, uh, banknotes. Uh, must be adjusted to accept uh, the polymer notes because sometimes the problem with the polymer notes are they are more uh, rigid and the more uh, stiff than the cotton uh, cotton uh, banknote yeah. and uh, these machines were designed to handle one type of material yes so they need to be adjusted or in in some cases they need to be changed and that that is a big, ad that's one adva disadvantage uh, that uh, it is, uh, sometimes it could happen that uh, any of these machines must be replaced. Definitely, definitely. And this would be a cost that must be considered. Definitely. Uh, sometimes, you know, you know, like thinking of polymer notes for the advantages and everything like that, but would it, wouldn't it be easier well, you know, we talked about like, you know, like with the humidity and all that, the, the, the you know, the money that is, uh, um, you know, that can be prone to uh, lots of things wear and tear and all that. But 
changing the currency as a whole, I mean, the, the look of uh, uh, um, the 10 pounds, the 100 pounds, the 200 pounds, the 5 pounds, as a whole in order to incorporate other illegal activities, uh, money and uh, uh, the gray zone. Uh, um, gray economy. The uh, gray economy money into the, the, the big you know, stream of uh, money. You know, would it be more costly than issuing uh, um, those uh, polymer banknotes or this is, you know, a good uh, step? I think we are t talking about two uh, uh, two different different uh, things. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Okay. Changing the currency, um, the, the design of the currency entirely, and withdrawing the old currencies and replacing them with new uh, uh, currencies is very ex very expensive. Yeah. Sometimes it uh, uh, it might be a necessity, mm -hmm. like in Iraq, what happened in Iraq and other countries, yeah. they they had to do so. But the exercise is extremely expensive. Although it has its, its own benefits and merits, but it is very expensive. Yeah. And on the other, uh, the other side of the, uh, of, the, of the story is whether it is preferable to uh, issue polymer notes in order to encourage uh, integration of the uh, great economy into the formal economy Again, this must be considered depending on the size of the gray economy uh, uh, in, in, in a country. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, gauging the benefits against the, the costs at the end. And the decision would be taken after that. Definitely, definitely. Well, you know, like, uh, um, that's you know, like, uh, the decision and you know, like, it's a trial. Actually, you know, like mm -hmm. the, we'll see, you know, how it will work out. I think it will work. You know, I mean, uh, this is you know, not a big, you know, note, and uh, it works, you know, with smaller notes like ten pound, uh, ten pound note. Yes, definitely, it will work because we have fifty, fifty other countries mm -hmm. have been using polymer notes you know, since uh, 1988, mm -hmm. and the number is increasing every year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you know, going to another issue now, you know, with all that, with all you know, like the changes that are taking place, you know, the new republic, with all you know the mega projects that are being, uh, uh, well, um, you know, we, that we just see on the floor that being inaugurated every day, uh, with a change, you know, of uh, say, you know, Egypt as a whole. Um, how do you see the future from now? And what do we need? You know, every day we see a lot of different things. You know, of course, you know, like when we're talking about, we want to feel um, the, the the development uh, with the, the the individual, and there is uh, the initiative of decent life, Haya Karima, and there is a lot more um, that is to touch upon the lives of the individual and those of the lesser uh, the, the 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 lesser brackets there, you know, the less advantaged uh, ones. Um, how do you see, well, the future and all the, the efforts taking place right now, and what do we need more, in your opinion? In fact, the, uh, the benefits or the fruits of the uh, mega projects are being seen differently. It depends on who is analyzing, who is watching mm -hmm. these, uh, uh, these projects and the outcome of the projects. The international institutions like the uh, IMF, the World Bank, uh, the international investors, they see Egypt is progressing very good. They see the results of the, uh, the uh, economic indicators are moving uh, very fast despite in a fair, the, in a fair the, good way. Yeah, uh, the situation of the COVID-19, yes, definitely. Okay? They see it positively in, in many ways. Uh, maybe some other individuals or even uh, uh, entities, uh, they see it less uh, optimistic. They see that, yes, we, are, we hear about uh, the outcome of the uh, projects, uh, the economic reforms, but yet on grounds. Yeah. We see some difficulties in many areas, price some Prices uh, uh, in, 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 in certain areas are uh, increasing. Uh, inflation yeah. has uh, reached to the highest in a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they see the uh, the the little things, but magnifying yeah. the 
negative impact. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, they have their, their own reasons. Mm -hmm. some, uh, some individuals see the What could the be the reason for people that see like they magnify uh, the negative impacts, you know? I mean, it's like, you know... They don't see, they don't see the benefits. Mm -hmm. they, see they don't want to see, you know, something... Or maybe in, in, intentionally they, they close an eye. Mm -hmm. They turn a blind, a blind eye on, uh, to the, uh, the benefits, uh, but they see only the uh, bad things or yeah. the negative impacts, uh, and maybe they magnify yeah. uh, these impacts and claim that uh, we haven't yet uh, seen the fruits of the economic reform. Well, you know, it's going to be like what is, we've been working, I mean, what has been achieved in seven years hasn't been achieved in a long time, in, in actually. Mi in more than 30 years. Definitely. But the, definitely. we must not forget yeah. that some of the yields of the economic reforms and projects will be, will be seen for the future generations. Definitely. And not entirely for the... Now, exactly. For the now. Education, education. Well, we do have right now, you know, everything right now. You know, I mean, a small child wouldn't be a gentleman like education, just like that. for example, that. If, yeah. if, if, the, if the government invests in, in education, you won't see it next year. Definitely. You will see it after a few years. Uh, so uh, it, it depends who is watching and uh, in which side yeah. he is watching. Exactly. On which side is very important too, you know. Well, you know, we've seen it, like, uh, noticed, you know, in, you know like, um, some negative, uh, let's say, well, people, or, you know, like, uh, some, you know, like, we, we do have, of course, you know, like, um, uh, for every good action, there is a reaction. Some are just, you know, it's a new, you know, like thing. That definitely, there is a reaction. Um, and then when it just, you know, clarifies for people when they see how things are, those, you know, who just, you know, uh, can really see the the benefits. Then, you know, they just accept it. Others, you know, who are either um, do have an agenda, or as you say, they close an eye intentionally, or uh, they just uh, naturally pessimistic. They don't want to see the good in anything at all. But, um, you know, like you've been working on, you know, like um, um, talking on the different issues and clarifying them. Yet some of these, um, let's say, those, you know, with the, 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 uh, the, the, the negative interaction are just, you know, putting words in your mouth. Uh, that you did not say, you know, and it's like this happens to a lot of people seen on social media. Say, well, I never said that. They're trying to, you know, like when you say something a positive, you know, for the things that are really positive, they try to just let other people be against you by just putting mm. words in your mouth that you didn't say. It, that's exactly what happens, and uh, it happens with me. Well, I have a personal experience, and yeah. not a nice one, that uh, one day. I dis uh, when I was googling uh, an, uh, an important issue about the uh, growth rate uh, of Egypt, I discovered that uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah. Uh, so we know the, the side, side now. Okay. <laughs> the dark side. Yeah. They they the non-Muslim Brotherhood <laughs> out of context mm -hmm. and put it into the wrong context. Yeah. And uh, I had to declare it. Uh, it's such spreading, you know, those, especially you know, when you just yeah, you know, uh, uh, write the magazines or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It definitely. It's, uh, it's really a, a process that one of the things that are just, you know, to, to break anything good or any, anything, to just give uh, the wrong uh, uh, information or misconceptions always you know, to other people, to just, you know, like uh, uh, see the wrong, or what they see or what they want them to believe or see. Well, um, well, we do still you know, have, uh, you know, uh, with the situation that we have uh, with the COVID-19, um, well, you know, and, and all the world has, well, the, the still, you know, the tourism is not in its full scale. Well, there are, you know, like people coming, of course. There are, you know, like, uh, um, uh, trips that are going to be to the North Coast and others, you know, starting from October. Uh, the whole world doesn't know what's going on yet. But then, you know, we do still have, you know, like, um, you never know with the people that come to travel to you and come, like, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago when we had, you know, an Indian passenger and he had um, uh, his own papers that he was uh, free of COVID-19. But then when they just tested him, he was positive. So they just sent him back on the plane. Uh, he came in. So this is, you know, like we, you can have uh, people like that and they just, you know, uh, that causes a scare to other countries. Uh, so they don't want to receive, you know, those, you know, who come through Egypt. 
and can you know be from other countries can have this problem and going to like them. Like England, a few days back, exactly. they, they declared uh, Eve uh, 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 as a very serious zone for yeah. banning travel to to and from Egypt. Because the people are coming, for, you know, like to, to passing by Egypt and going to it, you mm. know. So mm. they don't want, you know. Uh, that especially that they do have very but, high rates. But in fact, uh, we count on Russia more than England. <laughs> exactly, that's the thing. <laughs> they will you know. compensate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We do have, you know, some more like uh, no. uh, you know like, newcomers that we know very well. You know, like mm -hmm. they just you know uh, come here. Um, you know, other uh, other uh, you know aspects. So we have now. You know, we still have been really working very hard, and with the um, uh, testimonies of the international agencies, financial agencies, Fitch, and more. You know, like talking about Egypt that is really doing well and uh, uh, the rating is really good. Um, now we know like if we were not in this situation uh, like suffering from the COVID-19 like everybody is worldwide, what do you think we would have achieved? Uh, if we if if we don't have or if we haven't if suffered we exactly from if you know if this you know the is it COVID nineteen Egypt would have achieved a higher uh, growth rate, uh, not less than six and a half percent for this financial year. And uh, I just want to recall the statement made by the the CEO or the managing director of the IMF uh, when she met uh, his uh, the president of CC in Paris. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, she affirmed that uh, Egypt, uh, despite everything, will be uh, will be considered as among the ten fastest economies in the world. So, uh, all giving all difficulties and bad uh, negative repercussions of COVID-19, and we listen to a statement made by a senior official in the IMF uh, uh, that gives credibility to the Egyptian economy and opens the doors yeah. to uh, foreign investors and international uh, organi uh, organizations to reconsider uh, decisions to uh, come to Egypt again. Definitely. Well, you know, we run out of time, unfortunately, so, you know, we have to wrap it up. Uh, uh, but, you know, like, as we're working very hard, we're always looking for a better future. Uh, well, you know, we're praying God, you know, that things go without no more pandemics and uh, things like that that we hear, you know, that the scare, you know, that uh, these pandemics are just, uh, you know, coming in the middle and, and, and creating uh, a big scare. So thank you very much, Mr. Hany. Pleasure. It's a pleasure always having you with us. And I'd like to thank our viewers for being there. We'll see you again next week. As for now, as we say, God bless Egypt. Long live Egypt. God bless uh, our uh, police, our army, our white army, our president. Uh, and uh, as we quote from the Holy Quran, with Holy Mr. Inshallah, Amin, enter Egypt, God willing, safe. And from the Holy Bible, Mubarak, Shabi Misr, bless be Egypt, my people. I'm Nabi Nazim signing out. Goodbye for now.